So a couple of things I wanted to note. One is from the first reading where St. Paul is speaking to Timothy and saying, the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine. I wonder when that is. Um, following their own desire, desires and insatiable curiosity will accumulate teachers and will stop listening to the truth and will be diverted to myths. Of course, he's speaking in a pagan culture and so many of the myths of that time uh, were of the gods and, and everything. But even in today's world, we have so many people going after so many different things. We see sometimes listed that there's going to be a, a, a psychic fair here in town. Going after these things, seeking secret knowledge, secret power. Is, do we think it's wrong because they're fake? No, we think it's wrong because they're real. Because they're real. And it's going after a secret power which comes not from God, but from the evil one. And whether it be that, or yoga, or Reiki, or so many of the other different things in our culture which says, I will give you peace, when only Jesus can give us the peace that will last. The world can't give us lasting peace. And so people stop listening to the truth because they start listening to all these other things that pander to them, that make them feel good that give them an immediate reaction, but not necessarily something that will continue for eternity, something that will last deep within our hearts. So that's one thing. So many, uh, and people don't listen to sound doctrine. In fact, people say there is no truth today. Say it's my truth or your truth or whatever, but don't step on me with your truth. The other piece I wanted to look at was in the Gospel, as Jesus notes this poor widow who comes and puts in two small coins. He says, this poor widow put in more than everyone else, all the other contributors to the treasury, because from her poverty she has contributed all she had from her livelihood, where they contributed from their surplus wealth. I think I've shared with this with you before, but one of my friends in the seminary one day came to me when we were in seminary and said to me, you know, I, I know I needed to get rid of stuff. I've been hoarding stuff too much. So uh, there were these things that I had that I realized I wasn't using, I didn't like anymore. So I put them out for other people to take. He says, uh, I'm working on it. I looked at him and says, well, that was so generous of you. You gave people things you didn't want anymore. <laughs> Uh, and that, that can be, I mean, that's the first step, of course, because we can sometimes hold on to even the things we don't want. But Jesus doesn't say that that's generosity. Rather, what our call is, even to the things we do want, the things we do need, even from our, uh, our, our livelihood, not just from our surplus wealth, and this is something, you know, I, I'm working on myself. I, I, I feel at times like I give a lot, but then I look and I say, yeah, but there's always that cushion that I keep, this lack of trust. And it's not just about wealth either. It's also about our love. Are we willing to give love even when we don't feel good, even when it doesn't feel good, when we're in a bad and crabby mood, because let's be honest, we can all get into a bad and crabby mood. I'm sure we've all been there. And in those moments, that's when we have to give from our livelihood, not from our surplus. It's easy to be nice to people when we like them and we feel good. It's not so easy to be kind and generous and loving when we don't feel that. So Jesus and Paul are t challenging us today to listen to the truth even when we're not ready to hear it and to be able to give from our brokenness, from our livelihood, from our need and not just from our excess.